Hey everybody, I hope you're having a nice week so far. Recently I've been wanting to remake an old martyrdom build that I made back in the beta. I remember it being really strong and having a ton of fun mowing down crowds at a very fast pace. But with the new career paths, I wanted to test it out for efficiency. It turns out that it still performs just as good, if not better. Anyways, let's start with the loadout. I went with the Rashad Mark II combat axe with damage to flak armored enemies and maniacs. This should help take care of any rushing threats as well as shotgunners and a couple swings. In order to be able to do that, I'm relying on two specific blessings that help mow down just about any enemy in our way. The first being Brutal Momentum, which grants us more weak spot damage as well as clearing through any enemy hit mass upon kill. This will usually clear through multiple targets in a single light swing, but you can gain even more power behind it if we also take Head Taker. If you're running this blessing on tier 4, your power can get up to 25% at max stacks. And keep in mind, this is before we even lose any wounds on our Martyrdom build. When I was testing out axes, I wanted to have something more reliable for attack speed as well as power behind every hit. I struggled up until I rolled this axe, and truth be told, I doubt I'll even swap off of this for a while. Just remember that your dumb stat for this should be mobility, as you'll want 70% or above for every other stat in order for this to perform to its best possible potential. The reason I like this build is it's more dependent on your melee weapon over your secondary choice. For me though, I decided to reuse my Mark II stub revolver that I was using on other builds as it was more reliable to take down snipers and carapist armored enemies. But please feel free to use any other weapons that you want. For instance, you can use weapons that focus more on crowd control and staggering like the flamer, or if you want to keep up with ranged enemies you can take the slug shoddy for some crazy damage on pretty much anything. I still prefer the revolver even after the nerf for more focus towards single targets as well as being able to stagger a crusher if I needed to. The perks that I went with were damage to carapace and flak armored enemies. And for my blessings, I have surgical for the quick crit chance and hand canning for applying rending whenever I do apply a crit. The idea is to get to your max stacks with surgical and then fire upon any heavy elite that we can see. Usually if you can take your time it will only take a couple shots, but it's even more powerful at close range because of our passives. As for my curious, we obviously want full wounds, but to help with our efficiency we want to take boost in health on all of them. You can also take some sprint efficiency and toughness damage reduction as well, and I would also recommend taking some combat ability regen to get your ability back much quicker. Here's my talent tree. The way I designed this build is so I can output a ton of damage while keeping my survivability up. It's meant to be played aggressively and keep the enemy from breaking up our team's composition. And I also felt that with the raw attack speed of this axe, it felt much easier to pop a majority of my passives. Let's go over the talent tree starting with my main ability. I went with Fury of the Faithful as it's extremely reliable for whenever I was fighting alone. You don't always have to use it for an attack as it also grants you 50% of your toughness back instantly. But if you're going to use it while you're grouped up, the attack speed that you get for 10 seconds is extremely worth it. And if you target any elites, make sure your first hit lands as it will be a guaranteed crit. Just to make sure that we have a safety net for toughness or damage, I took redoubled zeal for the extra charge on Fury of the Faithful. For my blitz, I found that this class can wipe hordes very easily with the stunstorm grenades. Not to mention, these nades stun every enemy in the game outside of monstrosities, so it's incredibly good for saving a teammate or getting out of a bad situation. The aura I took was Benediction for the toughness damage reduction. This will help mitigate damage that you can take and also keep your team safe too. The idea behind this build is to be at low wounds and still survive harsh beatings thanks to our damage reduction. So obviously since I'm making a martyrdom build, I need martyrdom, and this gives us 8% more melee damage for each missing wound. That means at maximum stacks you can have over 50% additional damage for all of your melee attacks. To make sure that we can last in a fight, I chose the two modifiers that were offered to us, since they both help tremendously. I shall not fall boost the amount of damage reduction we can have up to 35% at max stacks, and with Maniac we can gain up to 28% more attack speed with max stacks. I found these modifiers help keep us involved in the action without actually worrying about having to go down. The passes I chose for this build are meant to keep my focus on dealing a ton of damage while also allowing me to take on any threat that pushes my team. I'm going to start at the very top with Anoint in Blood. This will help our base range damage, but just keep in mind that it will also reduce our damage based off of how far we are from our target. Bleed for the Emperor is a great passive that helps us preserve our wounds for more survivability since it reduces the amount of health lost by 40% with each wound. To have more flexibility with our secondary choices, I took Dance of Death for the lower spread and recoil whenever I successfully dodge. I really like this passive for whenever I join a match and check what everyone has. If I notice that people have a lot of ranged options, I can always swap out for a closer ranged weapon on the fly. Next up, I chose Disdain for the 5% damage gain we gain with each enemy hit on a melee attack. This can stack up to 5 times for a maximum of 25% damage. And so we can always remain within the crowd, enemies within and enemies without will actually replenish our toughness as long as we have 3 enemies within 5 meters of us. Phase Fortitude is absolutely necessary for the extra 2 wounds so we can gain max stacks with our keystone and their modifiers. 
Faithful Frenzy is also necessary for the melee attack speed. This is a nice passive to have for the boost we get before we even lose any wounds. I chose good balance for the damage reduction boost that we gain for successfully dodging. This helps tremendously whenever we're fighting groups of ragers for example. Normally they'll shred your wounds down, but with the reduced damage, this can actually be a lifesaver. Since I also wanted a saving grace, I took until death for the invulnerability that we get if we take any fatal damage. This can give us a fighting chance if we have no way out of a bad situation. And with a cooldown of 2 minutes, it's pretty hard to beat. And the best part is that you can continue to fight your way out with Holy Remnant. With this passive, you can gain back 25% of your max health, and as long as you keep swinging, you'll gain back the health almost always. Another passive I like to grab is Purge the Unclean for the damage increase to infested and unyielding enemies. This helps trim the fat within the horde encounters as most will die to a single swing, but this also helps take down some of the heavier elites as well. With Sustained Assault, we gain even more damage whenever we hit an enemy with a melee attack. This stacks 5 times, giving us a maximum of 20% melee damage. And finally, I took Thy Wrath Be Swift so enemy melee attacks can't stun me. This is great for keeping our mobility up since we also get a small boost of movement speed as soon as we take some damage. For my operative modifiers, we have boost in health, melee damage, movement speed, suppression, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. All of these boosts go really well with the entire build and complement pretty much everything so no point feels wasted. I truly love the synergy this build provides as it complements playing with the team and being able to trim the herd with ease. Most enemies won't even give you an issue because of the amount of damage you can deal back, and the axe is extremely easy to use as chaining light attacks provide almost as much damage as your heavy hits. The only issue that you might ever have is fighting against multiple gunners, but overall as long as you're playing close to your team, they should be able to help you out with that. I love playing aggressive and being rewarded for it, so if you're somebody who enjoys that playstyle, I really hope you give this build a shot. Anyways, I'm going to continue working on some of my other builds, but in case you forgot, my name is Zen, and I wish you a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Enjoy the rest of the match. Oh. 
I can think of no greater honor for my off-world associates than to be deployed in defense of the sector's most magnificent settlement. Yet she be brought low. I feel boredom and some further sorrows to come. And it's mine. Come on, 
Isolating targets. So much for that bomber. Hot